Hey folks, okay. Well, we said that if we wanted to come up with an automated process to go from a bunch of regular expressions to code for a, a scanner, then what we would need is to get from our regular expression, or at least one way to do it, is to go from our regular expressions to a non-deterministic finite automata, because we've got a technique to do that that we'll talk about now called Thompson's construction. And then after that, we'll produce a deterministic machine for that um, using subset construction. And then after that, we'll go on and minimize that. And then later, we'll look at how to take that deter minimized deterministic finite automata and generate scanner code from it. But we've got this first step where we need to go from the regular expressions to a non-deterministic finite automata. And that's the topic for today. All right, so Thompson's construction is what allows us to do this. And essentially what it does is creates a couple of simple finite automata and then starts applying different rules to build them together based on the operations in the regular expression. So in the beginning, what we're going to do is just for every individual letter that appears in your regular expression, we'll create one non-deterministic finite automata for that single letter. And then we'll start applying these rules to say, okay, well, as you piece these things together in your regular expression, here's the rules to apply to take these two existing machines and glue them together or to take this one machine and, and reconstitute it to, uh, to produce a new effect. So the construction rules that we're going to look at are a construction rule to essentially append two machines together. So if I've got one machine for A and one machine for B, how do I glue those things together to produce a machine for AB. And this will work for machines as well. If I've got a machine to rep represent some expression and I've got another machine to represent another expression and I want to glue the two expressions so it's the first one followed by the second one, this same rule will apply. And another rule for how to use the how to build the star. So if I've got a machine for A and I want a star, how do I construct that? How do I construct the new machine from the first one? And again, this will work for expressions as well. If I've got a machine for some expression and I want that expression star, then this will tell me how to build the new machine for the expression star. And one more dealing with alternation. So if I want to be able to pick either A or B and I've got a machine for A and I've got a machine for B, how do I build that new machine? Now, this will also go through and have a specific precedence. So um, if we've got a regular expression that's got some operations in brackets, we'll do the, the stuff in brackets first, right? Usual idea, parentheses gives us the highest precedence. Um, after that, we'll take a look at operations using star, and then operations using concatenation, and then operations using the or. So we'll have an order of precedence for the, the order in which we apply rules to our regular expression. All right. Again, this will allow us to eventually take any regular expression and build a non-deterministic finite automata for it. So we'll just go through and look at what the rules for single letter machines are, the rules for concatenation, the rules for clean star, and the rules for alternation for the or. So for a single letter, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We've got a start state, we've got an accept state, and the way we get from the start to the accept is by seeing that single letter, right? So this is pretty obvious. So what we're going to do is for all of the machines that we build, we'll build them in such a way that there is a single start state and a single accept state. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And again, we're going to assume that anything else goes to some off-screen reject state. So we can do this for any letter, A, B, E, 1, 0, whatever it might be. We can come up with a, a non-deterministic finite automata to recognize that single letter. So now suppose we want to deal with concatenation. So I've got machines for two letters or for two expressions, and I want the concatenation of the two of them. Well, for our non-deterministic finite automata, we said that we had these null transitions, these transitions where... I can take them and it doesn't consume any input. So for instance, if I want X and Y and I've got a machine for X and I've got a machine for Y, then I just glue them together with one of these null transitions. So the first machine's start state becomes my overall start state. 
and the last machine's accept state becomes my overall accept state. And again, these um, these machines could have anything, any any set of states going from their start to their um, to their accept internally. So we're just gluing together the two machines with a single extra null transition. And again, keeping in mind that what the new start state is and what the new accept state is. So concatenation is easy. If I want to do clean star, so I want to do something like you know, some expression star. So if I've got a machine for just the simple part, the expression, the single letter or the expression, whatever it might be, then what I want is the ability to either bypass it, right, because the star is zero or more, so I need to be able to bypass it entirely, but I also need to be able to go back as often as I like and repeat it as often as I want. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our original machine, so it's got its start state and its accept state, and to be able to go back and accept it over and over and over again, we'll throw in a null transition from the end back to the start, right? So that allows me to create this cycle of seeing it as many times as I want to. But then we need the ability to bypass it entirely. So I'm going to create a new start state for my new machine and a new accept state. And I'm going to say that that start state can totally bypass the machine, right? Saying, okay, it doesn't, it appears zero times. So that means that to get the case where it does accept a bunch of them, I need a null transition from my new machine start state to the old start state for my machine. And I need one from the old machine's accept state to my new machine's accept state. So this becomes my new accept, this becomes my new start, and I've got four new, so I've added two states, and I've added four of these null transitions to get my new, uh, my new machine. And again, whatever's inside my old M1 could be as complex as we like. And it's all based on the, the use of these null transitions. Let's see. If I want to go for OR, if I want it to accept either X or Y, for instance, and I've got my machine for X and my machine for Y, again, what we'll do is say, well, we'll add a new start state and a new accept state and I'll throw in a null transition to X's start state and a null transition from X's accept state. So if I see an X, I can take that null transition, do my X and do a null transition and I wind up in an accept. And then I'll do the same thing for the other one, a null transition to Y's. So I wind up in Y's start state, I see my Y and wind up in the accept state and then a null transition to my new accept state. So again, we add two new states, a new start, a new accept, and four of these null transitions. So again, we can come up with this fairly simple set of construction rules. Now again, we want, an, we're going to tackle our operations when we're going from an expression to a finite automata, we're going to go through the operators in the expression in a specific order by precedent. So brackets, then the clean star, then concatenation, then finally the or. Now, I've uh, glossed over a couple of the, the kinds of operations that we often use in regular expressions, you know, things like the A plus. These can, in fact, be represented as um, combinations of other things. If I wanted to say that there had to, so A plus could be represented as an A followed by an A star, right? So we can still do it with our Thompson's construction. Or if I said that, you know, I needed um, three or more, then I could have three A's and then an A star, that kind of idea. So we can come up with, uh, for any of the our normal regular expression operations, we can come up with a, a way to do it with the rules that we've got here. All right, so in terms of running through a few examples, let's take an example for zero or one star, so I can have essentially any strings at all in the beginning, any patterns of zeros and ones in the beginning, and it's going to end in a one. So what we're going to do is just build this up chunk by chunk. I'm going to have a machine for zero, and a machine for a one, and another machine for a one, and I'm going to start gluing these things together. So our brackets have highest precedence, so we're going to do what's inside those first, which means doing this 0 or 1. So 
we'll have a machine for our zero. So it's going to have a, a little internal start state, a zero, and its accept state. And we'll have a machine for a one. So it's going to have its start state, a one, and then its accept state. And then to get my or, I'm going to say, okay, well, the way I did that was to throw a new start state and a new accept state on the end and add my null transitions to the zero's start state and the one's start state and then my null transitions from the two accept states to my new machine's accept state. So these six states are my zero or one. And then I throw in the clean star. So now I want to be able to go from my six state machines accept back to its start so that it can go through any number of times. And I want a new start and accept around it so that I can bypass it. So I throw in my new start state, my new accept state, I've got a null transition to the start of that OR section and a null transition from its accept to my, my clean stars accept and a way to bypass the machine so it can appear zero times. So here, these first eight states are doing my zero or one star. And then I need my concatenation at the end to get that final one. So off at the end here, I've got my machine for a one and to get my concatenation, I just throw in a null transition from that first big machine to my one machine. And there I have my non-deterministic finite automata to recognize that expression. Now you can see that the number of states in this and the number of null transitions and things tends to explode pretty quickly, right? We've got a very small regular expression, relatively speaking here, and yet we've got a, what, 10 states and, uh, oh, uh, let's say 10, 11, 12, I don't know, a dozen or so uh, transitions in there someplace. So keep in mind that these non-deterministic finite automata are going to get fairly big. And the deterministic finite automata that we produce from them later are, can also be fairly big, which is why eventually we'll throw in a minimization stage. Uh, oh, so this is pretty much saying what I just babbled. We've got lots of extra states, right? Just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's do one more kind of demented example just to, uh, just to drive the point home. So this time we'll go through and our expression is going to be A or A star AB starred followed by an A star. So Internally, I've got these four A's. So I'm going to have four little tiny machines for those, and I've got this one B. So I'm going to have a little tiny machine for that, and I'm going to start gluing these things together. So if you happen to look off here, there's uh, these four machines for A's embedded in there, and one machine for a B embedded in there. So we've got this big bracketed expression that we're going to have to do first, and inside it's got this bracketed expression that we're going to have to do firstly, firstly. And within that, we've got our A star AB. So we'll do the star and then the concatenations. So let's start off with that A star in here someplace. So we've got a little machine for our A, and we want to turn it into A star. So we throw in a null transition. And so I'm just going to assume that everything that's not labeled here is a null transition. We throw in a null transition from its accept back to its start. And then we throw in an extra start and accept state around it with a null transition that allows us to bypass the machine. So this is our, this little block of four states here is our A star. And then after that, we need our machine for our A with a null transition to get to that, right, for our concatenation, and a little machine for a B with a null transition to get to that. So here, this uh, block of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight states is our um, A star A B. Uh, let's see, now we want that starred. So we need, again, a, tra a null transition from its accept back to its start, and we need a new start and a new accept that allows us to bypass it with a null transition that allows us to skip that bracketed expression. So now we've got our A star A B star. We need to OR that with an A. So we need a machine for an A, and we need an OR that says, okay, well, I can either go to this big thing that I just created or I can go to my A. And then either one of those is going to transition back to an accept state. So this big beastie is my A OR blah, 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 blah. 
So at the end here, I still need my, I need to concatenate it with an A star. So I need my A star, so I've got my A with a null transition back to, from its accept back to its start and a way to bypass it. So a new start, a new accept, and a null transition around it. And then I need to concatenate the two of them together. So I've got this one extra null transition in between. And so I've got my overall start state way back at the beginning, and I've got my final accept state, and who knows how many states there are in the middle here. But again, this gives you an idea. You can go through and just piece by piece incrementally build up a non-deterministic finite automata for whatever your expression happens to be. Lots of fun. Okay, just a couple of bits and pieces. Um, this is looking at, you know, so far we've been looking at a, a construction for something that recognizes a single token. If we wanted to be able to recognize any token in the language, then we could take a similar approach where we say, well, if I've got a regular expression for the first token type and a regular expression for the second one and a regular expression for the third one, I could just take the or of all of them to get anything that's in the language, any valid token. So I could use my Thompson's construction to go through and say, okay, well, this is my big machine is basically going to be an R1 or an R2 or an R3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe I would want to go through and somehow mark my accept states by which specific token type they recognized so I could distinguish between the different kinds of accepts so that eventually when I go through to generate code for this, I can say, okay, well, you know, yeah, that was a valid token and it was a valid, you know, int symbol or it was a valid less than operator or it was a valid whatever the different token types are. There's one more complication just to uh, kind of look ahead. One more complication that we're going to run into in that eventually we're not going to be looking at a string representing just a single token. A string is going to represent a whole sequence of tokens. And so it gets a little bit more complicated to say, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to consume the entire string to recognize a token. I'm going to consume a part of the string for the first token and then a part more of the string for the second token, etc., etc. So one of the things we can do is to say, okay, well, we'll make the language kind of fully delimited. There's got to be white space. We'll use white space only as delimiters and there's got to be white space before and after every single token that's in there. So every time I see a token, I go, ah, that's the end of a token. Or every time I see a white space, I go, ah, that's the end of a token. But that um, that works and it keeps our, our regular expressions and things nice and simple and keeps our machines simple. But it's kind of a pain for the uh, for the programmer if you've got to put a space before and after you know, every single semicolon and every single less than or greater than or whatever it might be. So usually we'll go with something that's a little bit more sophisticated. One of the things that you can do is when we're building our recognizer, set it up so that it'll go through and scan as far as it can. And if it gets to the end of the string and it's not in an accept state, then it backs up to the most recent accept state that it saw and goes, oh, okay, well, you know, back there, that was the uh, the end of the token that I was supposed to recognize. And then it restarts with a new token from after that point. So you can have this sort of uh, scan forward and then roll back and scan forward and roll back and scan forward and roll back approach to try and work your way through the, the token set. But we'll come back and talk about that later after once we get to the uh, um, some sections on generating the scanner code from our deterministic machine. All right, that seems like a good place to leave it for now.